Hello Universal Evolutionary Trace or UET user. Today we will be going over some of the new features which have been implemented for the UET web service. Additional information can be found by visiting the tutorials page found here or the frequently asked questions page found here. Additional information can be found in videos at this link. Now I will cover the four types of UET input in reverse order. First, the amino acid sequence in FASTA format option. A previous video, linked in the annotation currently on display, will describe this input more fully. However, I would like to highlight the fact that a new example has been added to the website which can be seen by pressing this link. It is also important to note that any FASTA sequence must be submitted with an identifier, or else an error will be thrown which returns you to the input screen. Next, the Unipart Accession Number Input. This interface has not changed since the video found in the annotation currently on display. Entering a valid Uniprod identifier and then pressing the Show Pre-Computed Traces button will generate a table of previously generated evolutionary trace results. If no structures are returned or the protein databank structure of interest is not among them, a new trace can be run by pressing here. We now look at the PDB coordinates file input page. A previously recorded video on this input type can be found in the displayed annotation. I would like to point out again that omitting an identifier when submitting your file will generate an error. Finally, we look at the PDB ID and chain identifier input. This interface has changed significantly since the original release of this web service. It is now possible not only to upload a PDB ID and chain identifier, but also the PDB ID without the chain identifier, or a list of such inputs on separate lines. An example of such an input can be seen by clicking on this link. As you can see, it is also possible to use comments preceded by pound signs in this input if you wish. Pressing the Submit button after entering such a list will produce a table of relevant results. The results for each structure returned in the table can be downloaded by pressing the zip file link on the right side of the table. While links to all of the results can be downloaded by pressing the Download Links to Results button. These can be processed using the Python script provided at this link to download all of the zip results as well. If the PDB ID and chain identifier of interest are clicked instead, you will be taken to the relevant results page. Here you will see several different interfaces. The first is the structure view. This is also covered in another video linked in the annotation. You can zoom in and out on the structure by placing your mouse inside the blue box and using the scroll functionality of your mouse, trackpad, or phone. Clicking and dragging within the figure will cause it to rotate. You can also hover over a residue in order to see an informational bubble about it. Finally, by right-clicking inside the structure viewer, you will reveal the JSMOL menu, which can be used to access more advanced functionality not covered in this video. By pressing the toggle black-white background, you can change the background color of the structure viewer. By pressing the Spin On Off button, 
you can start or stop the rotation of the structure. The color bar seen below the image details the meaning of the color labeling. It shows that the red end of the spectrum identifies more important residues, while the purple end of the spectrum represents less important residues. Next you will see the sequence viewer. Here the amino acid sequence is represented as single letter codes will be seen. It is colored according to the same color scheme for importance. By hovering over a symbol, the page will display the three letter code and sequence position of that residue. By clicking on a residue, you will highlight it both in the sequence window and the structure viewing window. Clicking and dragging in the sequence window will not highlight multiple residues. However, filling in the boxes in the bottom of the sequence viewer and pressing the toggle select residue numbers button will select a range of residues. Having selected residues of interest, you may also want to save the image of the structure which can be achieved by pressing this button. You can also remove all residue selections by pressing the Clear All button in the Sequence Viewer. Finally, you can load a surface representation of the molecule instead of the cartoon by pressing this button. The surface representation may take a few seconds to load. Please be patient. The next area of the page allows for the viewing and download of several other results. This is covered in a previous video linked in the current annotation. By pressing the Visualize ET Ranks as Histogram button, you will be taken to this page, where the histogram is displayed in the same color scheme as the Structure and Sequence viewer. The residues are provided beneath each bar in the histogram, and the residue positions are provided every 10 residues. Should the histogram be longer than the web page, you can scroll to the right to see the remaining portion. This file can be saved by right-clicking and pressing the Save As option. By clicking on this link, you can view the ET ranks results for the current structure. You can save this data by right clicking and pressing the Save As option. Next, you will see links for PyMole, a popular structure viewing software as well as a plugin developed by our lab for visualizing ET in PyMole. These tools each have their own documentation. In the table below, you will find three files. The first is the zip file, which was downloaded earlier in the video. This is followed by the multiple sequence alignment file. This file can be downloaded by right-clicking and selecting Save As. Finally, you can download the PyMole session file generated during the trace of this structure. The next section of the results page displays the phylogenetic tree created during the trace of this structure. 
This is also covered in another video found in the annotation. By hovering over a value in the tree, you can reveal the species responsible for that entry. You can also change the shape of the tree by pressing the rectangular layout button. The tree image can be saved by pressing the Save SVG button. Once taken to the SVG page, the image can be downloaded by right-clicking and selecting Save As. The NHX file representing the tree can also be downloaded by pressing the View NHX file and then right-clicking and selecting Save As. The final portion of this page is used to run a de novo evolutionary trace. This is covered thoroughly in another video found in the displayed annotation. Here we would like to note that while users are encouraged to change the database used when retrieving sequences, some databases may produce very few results during the BLAST process, leading to a failed trace. As you can see, all the files downloaded during this video have been successfully saved. One feature we would like to point out before ending this video is that one can load the PyMole session file in PyMole. Selecting the pre-generated feature will identify the top residues in the structure being investigated. We thank you for watching this video and hope that it has been helpful to you.